Since I've been trying to become a bookworm, I've previously made videos where I put 10 books into a list within a genre or category to try and sort out which books I really want to be reading. And this method has really been efficient and helped me find new books. It also helped me find out which books I really wanted to read the most. A couple of months ago, I realized that I hadn't found any new books in a while. I blamed it then on my current book buying ban, which I think was correct. Because when you stop buying books, you sort of stop looking for new books, or at least I did. But when making these lists, I sort of forced myself to find old books that I had forgotten, but also I find new books that I didn't know existed. And then I'll try to squeeze them into a top 10 list, which I find very enjoyable. I feel like I've spent all autumn talking about fantasy without actually reading that much of it. And that's the reason why this top 10 is about fantasy. And please do add your fancy TBR in the comments below. That will make me very happy. And we'll start this off with the one that I by far think will be the most fun. And that's The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon. This of course has been hugely popular for the last couple of years. It came out in 2020 and it has been standing in my shelf for over a year now. It's about this guy called Linus Baker. He is a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. One day he is summoned by upper management and he's told that he's going to work at an orphanage where six dangerous kids live, including the Antichrist. I tend to enjoy novels that are not meant to be that serious and include things like caseworker and upper management. It's about taking something that's ordinary and maybe viewed as boring and make it more fun or extreme. One of the tropes in this novel is found family and I guess that that's more common in fantasy than in other novels and I do think that I might enjoy that very much. I know I say this quite a lot on this channel or I feel like it at least and also with this one I get that Neil Gaiman vibe mostly because you have that caseworker dull and then you have Satan not so dull. That seems to be a funny funny combo and I have enjoyed Neil Gaiman as I've Said. On the other side, this also makes me think about The Little Mermaid from Disney, so this could go all ways. But this is at least a book that has been standing in my shelf for quite some time. I guess it will be very easily read. It is hugely popular and, well, I guess it's time to read it soon. The next one on the list is said to be quite the opposite and that's the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. And the reason why I say that this might be the opposite is because this novel is grim dark. This story is said to be character focused and after what I could gather we have six individuals that we followed the story to. I've seen many people talk about this novel as a classic fantasy in the way that it has barbarians and torturers and wizards. But the thing that is supposed to set this one aside from those other ones is that you really feel bad for the torturers and barbarians after a while. Supposedly Joe Abercrombie writes about people in a way that makes you feel compassion. Which is important for most books. I have talked about the first book in this series on this channel before, The Blade itself. But the times I've mentioned it before I didn't realize how dark this novel truly is or is supposed to be. And I'm now wondering if I'm the kind of person that will enjoy Grimdark or not. And maybe that has become one of the biggest reasons why I really want to read this novel now, because I don't know how I will react if the torture is written in a very graphical way, for example. It doesn't seem like something I would enjoy, but who knows? If Abercrombie is as good as people say he is at getting you to feel bad for the characters in the novel, I think that only makes this whole thing worse. Because if you at one point feel bad for a person getting tortured and then feel bad for the person that tortured this guy, where does it end? I did really try to find information about this novel, but the only thing I seem to find is quite a lot of text not saying too much and I didn't really get to extract any useful information out of it. So what I now assume is that I'm going to read the book and feel bad afterwards. But at least that's number two on this list today. Then it's the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. So three things happen in a day. 
this woman comes home and find that her husband has killed her son and kidnapped her daughter. The second thing is that the empire she lives in now is being taken over by a madman. And the third thing is that the earth is tearing up and spewing up ashes. The first and most obvious reason why this one is on the list is because it just seems so fast paced. And that's something that I'm always afraid of. And since this all happens in one day, I do not have to be afraid of the world building maybe, or that's what I assume. I assume in many ways that there are few pages describing the landscape and what happens around them and rather that that comes on the journey alongside us as readers. In my mind now, I'm picturing the movie The Road that was a book written by Cormac McCarthy. Haven't read the book. But the movie I quite enjoyed and the feeling I got from the movie is sort of what I hope I'll get out of this novel. Also since her husband has killed her son and abducted her daughter, I feel that revenge is going to be quite central in these novels and I do enjoy a good revenge story. Needless to say, but I'm going to say it, this series is also hugely popular among people. Coming in at number four, it's a book that was suggested by you guys and it's Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This is a YA series and it's about this utopian place where there's no disease, no war, no hunger, but people have to die anyway. And this is the task of the Scythes. Two teens are chosen to apprentice to a Scythe against their will and they now have to learn how to kill or else they might have to die themselves. So that's basically the plot after what I could gather. And I have to say that I really enjoy the thought of that plot. It could go in many different ways. But the one place I don't think it will go is darkness. And you have to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think this novel could be fun or this series if they went there. I get that people die, so to an extent it is quite dark, but it's fantasy, so many people tend to die. But I think if this novel becomes darker than I imagine it to be, this might hurt my feelings more than other books might have done. I don't exactly know why, but that's the feelings I'm left with. But at this time, I sort of view it as childish, mostly because of the cover art, because it reminds me of Samurai Jack, which I watched on TV as a kid, which also had quite a bit of violence in it, but it was in no way scary. I don't expect the book to be Samurai Jack all over again, but the cover is quite childish and colorful, so I like it. Before I actually started reading any books, I spent a whole lot of time on booktube watching people talking about books. And especially fancy, I found it interesting when people talked about fancy, mostly because I wanted to get into the genre. It seemed like it had a bunch of cool people that were into the, those kinds of books. Anyway, I think the next series I'm going to talk about is the most beloved series I found when I watched those videos. It might have to do with the fact that I started one place and then was directed to other people that also liked these books, but that you'll have to decide for yourself. And that's the series Gentleman Bastard by Scott Lynch. The first novel in this series is called The Lies of Loch Lamora, and it's about this kid called Loch Lamora, who is an orphan and is excellent at stealing things. Locke is recruited into this gang called the Gentleman Bastards and these guys do criminal stuff. As always, I'm a bit unsure of what happens next, but there's something, something, something to do with killing the guy on top. Who would have thought? The first thing that gets me when reading about these books is the concept of rags to riches. I think that might become one of my favorite tropes. It's something I truly think that I will enjoy. The setting for the first novel is said to be built on the ruins of a mysterious alien race, which I think says it all and nothing at all. But it feels like the kind of place that many of these novels tend to be set. The feeling I get from this novel, I would like to compare to the musical version of Les Miserables. And I haven't read the book, but after what I've heard, the book might be grimmer than this actually will be. Maybe one day I'll read this one and then compare it to Les Miserables. That's maybe not a bad idea. I will see if I'll get on with reading both of them and then see who does it worse feelings wise. But anyway, obviously this novel I want to be reading because of the hype and the hype from people that I trust and love. A bit exaggerated, but too many people love this novel and I don't think it will be difficult to read it either. So 
Yay! And as with the last book, the next one is also chosen because it's hugely popular. It's just more hugely popular and that's The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is probably a cover that you've seen all around the place. But the real reason why I chose this novel is because it seems like it's Harry Potter for grown-ups. It's about this young wizard that, it's in that is incredible. He's an orphan and he gets into this prestigious wizarding school. Then he becomes a fugitive after a king is murdered. So it's not 100% similar, but that wouldn't be fun. And I know there are many people out there trying to find out what is next after Harry Potter. Because they fell in love with Harry Potter when they were little and then they try to figure out where do I go on from here. And for me that has been urban fantasy so far, trying to sort of live with the half normal half wizard stuff which I think is pretty fun and has helped me get into fancy more and more and this might be the next stop for me because this has been on the list for quite some time. I've seen this many places being described as a gripping coming of age story which also corresponds with the Harry Potter thing. There is something to be said for fancy authors that really make it in connecting you with the characters of the novel and this seems to be efficient in doing so. And with over 800,000 reviews on Goodreads, it says something about how widely this book has reached. I think when you're starting out reading books in the fantasy genre and you're a bit unsure, I would look at numbers and choose one of the books that is highly rated and most loved because mainstream things are mainstream for a reason. Will I regret having said that? Maybe sometime in the future, we'll see. I do like to think of myself as a bit of a snob in some ways. But also, if I'd walked into a store today and looked at that cover, there is a very, very, very high probability that I would have bought it because this just screams, I have many secrets and I want you to read about them. So there with my worst sales pitch ever, I leave this book. The Name of the Wind is a part of a series called the King Killer Chronicle and it's not a finished series yet and I know many people tend to dislike that, that they can't just finish the books when they've finished reading the books they have. But for me it's quite different because I've never been in that situation where I've been reading a series and it hasn't been finished and I could just walk around waiting for a book to be published and looking forward to it. So that's something I have thought of because I never really understood the frustration because you know at some point that book will appear and you'll be happy or disappointed but you can read a whole lot of books in the meantime. So this is actually one of the reasons why I would like to start The Name of the Wind so I can read all of the books and then just sit and wait and hope that the next book will come soon. Maybe that's also a bit pretentious. Who knows? So far in this video I have been talking about books that have performed quite well and have been written by authors that are known. And the next one is no different. It's The Poppy War written by R.F. Kuang. For some reason this trilogy has just been waltzing into my YouTube and Instagram feed for the last couple of months. So I thought this was recently published. But when I started reading about this it got me really intrigued. Especially when I read somewhere that it was based on China's bloody history. So Rin is this war orphan that there is something special about and she does extremely well on empire-wide testing and she comes into this elite military school and everyone's shocked. But since she is an orphan and has darker skin than everyone else, she really struggles to make friends and survive at this place. Hadn't it been for the fact that she's special. One of the main reasons why this one piqued my interest was that people talked about it as being quite different, especially when talking about the magical systems, where this sort of leans more to the historical aspect and the mysterious art of shamanism. And for everyone that follows the Norwegian royal family, you know that we love a bit of shamanism, especially imported from the US. I now hope you all are googling the Norwegian royal family and shaman because there is a lot of fun there. But anyway I really want to read this novel because of the mythical aspect and it seems to be more story than action. 
As with other novels on this list, this is also one of the rags to riches novels, which only is a plus. R.F. Kuang is a Chinese author and I don't think I've read any books by a Chinese author yet, so that's a huge plus. And in an earlier video I also discussed that I should be reading more Asian authors because that's where I lag behind I think. So that's number 7. The next one was one that was impossible not to include on this list for the bare reason that that one was one of the two contenders for my first high fancy experience when I decided to read high fancy and that is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And the reason why I chose to read Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson instead of this is because of the size and complexity. Because I don't know exactly how many pages this is but it's well over a thousand and this is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series. And I couldn't start here, I had to start somewhere else, like with Mistborn and only 700 pages. Now it's on the list and I think someday I will read these books. I only have to man up to it first. I'm actually not going to try to explain what these books are about at all, because Sanderson is quite fond of his world building and I believe that this is all about that. And then you can read the other books for the rest of the story. And yeah, you just have to be very keen to start these novels, I think. For me, reading Brandon Sanderson so far has been entertaining, but it hasn't been that super duper engaging. I'm now in the middle of Mistborn 2 novel. That one is better than the first one because now I know what the world is all about. As I said, the world building. So for me, it's all about the entertainment. I'm not sitting there in shock over some things that happened. Maybe that'll happen in book three of the Mistborn, but so far not. And it's just enjoyable. And the reason why this is on the list is because this is supposed to be more advanced. More pages, more characters, more world building. So if you just one day wake up and think that I'll spend a couple of months reading this series, Go ahead. But that's the reason why I'm not including Robert Jordan on this list, because that's too much of a commitment. But this is the biggest commitment on this list. And maybe if you've just read thousands upon thousands of pages, there is something in your head that just says, this is a part of me now. But for me, not yet. Actually, as I've talked about all of the other books before, I talked about Way of Kings, I would not say that I want to read Way of Kings that much right now, but maybe it's the fact that I'm in the middle of Brandon Sanderson right now, or maybe it's just the fact that the other ones on the list seem so intriguing. And now over to the books I have the least faith in in all of the books on this list, and that's The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. And the reason is that they all look so cheap. It looks like Netflix bought the rights to a crappy computer game and then made a series and just did no effort in selling them visually. But the thing that this series has going for it is that it's an urban fantasy, as I mentioned I like. It's about this person that is a magical consultant to the police. And since I recently started reading Ben Arnovich and the Rivers of London, where there is a cop that deals with magical cases and I thought I would think that was stupid, this might be something for me as well. This is sort of the other series I thought of when I started reading the Rivers of London series. As a friend described it to me, it seemed like this was kind of noir-like and set in Gotham City almost, which I don't know if I prefer or not. Since this is an urban fantasy, I often tend to like the aspect of things being very normal, but then not. But if things are very, very dark in the beginning, then I might think of it as just an ordinary fancy, even though it's supposed to be an urban fancy. One of the big pluses of this series is that all of the books seem to be quite small, so they're all like under 400 pages. That speaks for itself. If you want a little bit of fancy, small books is your thing. I'm sorry for the finger guns, but if you knew how much time I've spent filming this video, you would understand how tired I am right now. Because this wasn't really the ideal time to do a video. It's too late. Let's just put it that way. And now I'm going to bring this all home because the last one on today's list is Odin's Child by Siri Petersen. 
She is a Norwegian author and this is a YA series based in Norse mythology. And just so I mentioned it, all these are translated. Siri Petersen actually established a prize for fancy books written in Norwegian, I think, which had its first ceremony this year, so that I find really cool. There aren't too many books being published in the Scandinavian countries that are in the fantasy genre. This is about a 15 year old called Hirka. She is an outsider in the world she lives in and she doesn't have the ability to connect with the central power in the universe, which all the other people can, and she is also born without a tail. Of course, these things bug her because she can't do the things that everyone else does, but one day she discovers that she is not from that place. She just comes from a different, different world. So with that description, you might think that this really is a YA novel, because it deals with issues that are popular amongst young kids, feeling left out, feeling alone, have to struggle to fit in. I feel like this is one of those novels that might feel good to read as Norwegian because they're set in the Norse mythology spectrum. Not that other people can't relate because they really can, but at least we have the cold hopefully in winter. And I feel like this book is probably a book that's good to read in winter when it's cold and we do not have the Northern Lights in Oslo often, but one might hope. I'm not quite sure why I've been thinking this, but with this one, I feel like maybe the part of being a Norwegian will play a different role than it will and would have in other Norwegian books I've read. Maybe it's because Norse mythology is something that binds us together in the Nordic countries, even though it's not very visible every day. That's a good thing for the most part. I at least hope that I in some way will feel like a Viking when reading this and maybe I'll read it in winter and get some northern lights outside, which is very not likely. But this has gotten a lot of praise. I think this will be very, very, very easily read, which I tend to need sometimes. And I just find it very cool that there's three books in this fancy series that comes from Norway. I think I'll just end it there. There are my 10 fancy books that I want to be reading. Now I'll just have to get the time to read them. But as I mentioned in the start of this video, this is an excellent exercise if you want to sort out your reading. I do not believe in TBRs. I've tried making a TBR once before and that was a disaster and I didn't enjoy it at all. But just as a 10 books I would like to read sometime. So when I feel like I want to read fancy again, I can go back to this list and look at the books or just read them now while I'm still in the mood for fancy. I hope you've gotten some tips for books you can check out. If you have, please come below. That would make me really happy. And I hope you read good books as always. And thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.